And it's been a busy week in the world of e-mountain bikes, a week where the world's strongest man has turned to e-mountain bikes. But on today's show, we'll be talking kids' bike, concept bikes, and the squirrel squeezer has been up to her antics in Moab. So today then, we're gonna be looking at concept bikes. But I think the first question, Chris, is actually what is a concept bike? Uh, after all, the e-mountain bikes that we ride, they've become fine-tuned pieces of kit over the last seven years. You've got to think that Bosch came out with the first e-bike motor uh, right. back in 2012. Yeah. But I think what we're seeing at the minute is we've got e-mountain bikes, which, as I mentioned, are really fine-tuned, and the likes of Honda and KTM have actually got off-road electric uh, motorcycles, which yep. have become, you know, pieces of art Definitely in themselves. Really good. Uh, and I think it's very easy to kind of misinterpret what a concept bike is because there's lots of lots of sort of ghetto garden shed uh, builds, you know, built with, you know, you get a motor, you get a battery and you build a frame Just and stuff like that. Yeah. But I don't think it's about those guys. I think no. it's about the the guys with the bigger budgets, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think for me, the concept bike is those guys that got a huge, huge budget, probably like the automobile industry, yeah. is the guys that are gonna lead that charge. Um, they've got huge budgets and they've got like people who are forecasting what the technology is gonna be in 20, 40 yeah. years ahead. It's not gonna be those just yeah. standard. And there's seen a lot of players, you need good likes of Ford, mm -hmm. Opel, Vauxhall, yep. Peugeot, uh, Peugeot mm -hmm. Caterham, Harley Davidson, yeah. they've all been at mm -hmm. make, you know, making these concept bikes over the last 10 years. And yeah. if you look back, 2012, mm. when Audi made their concept bike, it looked yeah. ahead of the time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and I see the likes of you know, the, that that Audi bike and the Peugeot bike mm. as maybe being a concept cross-country style e-bike of yeah, the future. Yeah, definitely. And I think we you mentioned Honda are coming into the game with their new electric motocross bike. Mm. And we've always said, you know, a, a few shows ago that we cannot wait for Honda to enter the e-bike game. Mm. Literally that RN01 downhill yeah. bike. Imagine that with a Honda motor strap. I think it's a great thing. So yeah. I think we're seeing a really good distinction now between mm. e-mountain bikes yeah. and off-road motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And I think all the ghetto homemade stuff in the middle it's, it's you know we've been it's been spread apart I yeah, think don't definitely you think? try and pull those good bits from each part I think yeah and in the end we're going to end up with the ultimate e-bike exactly sure. but Chris when it comes to detail mm -hmm. what are we talking about are we talking about data analysis traction control connectivity gamification traction or control. gamification how do you call it is it gamif gamification gamification yeah. as we saw yeah. on the great bike last mm -hmm. week what are going to be the details of these concept bikes in the future do you, I, think? you know from those things you said I would quite like to see traction control can yeah. you imagine what you could do with the climbing you know yeah. abilities because that's what's limiting us at the moment on those yeah. slippy climbs is wheel spin so yeah. if you had something that could tailor that power down and provide grip yeah, I think, know, it's the, super it's, I think it's the software mm -hmm. that enables these bikes to deliver yeah. that power. But you know, for me, I think when it comes to concept bikes, mm -hmm. it's all about uh, the integration of the motor mm -hmm. with the with the gear with the gearing as well. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's a bad area at the moment. Definitely yeah. something we need to get rid of. So you know, so like Mubea, Mubea mm -hmm. made their concept bike, which we saw at Eurobike show last year, and it was it was the only one on show that showed right. you know, showed that that integration mm. together. Did look cool, yeah, definitely yeah. super smooth. And as I said, it's a weak point that we definitely need to move away. It's, it's old mm. technology as we talked about before yeah. on a high end bike. So Derailleur cassette. See you later. Yeah, but still, I mean, we've got bikes coming out here this mm -hmm. this year, like the high bike fly on. Yeah, that's that's ahead of the curve, I think. Mm -hmm, lots, of, lots of cool details on that. One bike that really caught my eye, Steve, was the Skoda Clement. Did you see that? Well, I know you like Skodas. Love Skodas, but it came out recently, and that thing has got heated grips, heated saddle, ABS, and it's got regen braking as well. So it means that it can top up the battery with braking along. Yeah, so. I'm into the regen, but I'm not sure about the heated grip and saddles and that. Oh, cruising that. along, you imagine <laughs> that in the winter? <laughs> cruising along. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you know, for me, it's not about the detail. I think the, the visuals yeah. is equally important. Right. Now, uh, there's this guy called Philippe uh, Bonifoy from mm -hmm. the south of France, runs a company called Atelier Mixture. Now, we've seen it earlier in the year, this bike, but I think visually, the design features integrated wow, uh, yeah. motor and gearbox. I think the styling on this bike Does really is good. ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Really, really Does nice. Really smart. And of course, you've got other such things as 3D printed bikes. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, we have seen them before, but yeah. um, ah, it's, you know, testing, testing new technologies out, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, I think taking a bit from every single, you know, of these new ideas, clumping it all into one mm -hmm. for your e-bike is something that's going to be really cool and super exciting to be coming up. Mm. 
Now, I think the big news this week is a kid's bike from former rifle and gun manufacturer Orbea from deep in Malavia. Uh, they come up with a super new cool bike, uh, Chris. Yeah, it looks uh, really cool. For a six years, six years to 10 year old. Yeah, and it I mean, looks it looks, it looks incredible. Do you know what? I'd be proud to own mm -hmm. one of those bikes. Yeah, I it's think. It's super stealth. Yeah, it looks exactly like a, a normal bike. I know it's got a hub gear on the back, but the actual yeah. down tube looks so slim. Can you imagine that on like a normal trail bike? It, I mean, look at it. Yeah. I mean, a kid would want, you know, they'll be riding down the trail and like, there's no difference between that yeah. uh, and any other bike. It's, yeah. as you say, it's a hub drive. Yeah. Uh, it's available for 1,800 euros. Mm -hmm. That's not too, you know, it's not too bad, is yeah, it? Yeah, it's only available in Europe uh, at the minute, not the mm -hmm. UK. So. Our friends across the English Channel. Mm -hmm. Does look super exciting bike though. Aubert, gotta congratulate you on making a very, very fine looking kids e-bike. But Chris, uh, moving on to some older stuff. I know that you've got uh, your mate Sam Pilgrim yeah, out on his new new high bike, downhill bike. Yeah, we were out in the woods last week uh, with Sam on his new downhill e-bike yeah, from right. uh, from high bike. It looks super sweet, got two, a little video. 200 mil travel. 200 mil travel. Yeah. And Sam was riding this like he'd ridden it, you know, his first ride on it, but he was riding it as per usual. Like, crazy stuff, doing massive backflips. Let's go and see what Chris and Sam had to say. I've met up with Sam Pilgrim today and he's brought along his high bike, the new Downhill 8.0, the 2019 Downhill e-bike from his sponsor's high bike. Looks a really cool bike. Obviously being an e-bike means you can smash it down the hill and charge back up all the way again for another run. This looks like a really cool bike, a few custom bits on here. I'll catch up with Sam just a minute and he can talk me through this bike. So hopefully it'll be along in a minute. I think uh, I can hear some tires coming. Oh, here he is now. Chris from EMBN has invited me down to show you around my new high bike downhill 8.0. This is from the X Juro range. This range from high bike is the more extreme style of bikes. And of course, downhilling is the most extreme form of mountain biking you can do. So on this bike, as you can see, the head angle super slack. That is to give it more stability at full speed. We've got 200 mil of travel on this bike for all the biggest bumps you can find. I want to use it uh, in all the bike parks around the UK because obviously we don't have uplifts and chairlifts here. So this is like a perfect bike when I want to do some downhilling. I also think it's going to be super fun to do like urban downhill stuff on around the UK or wherever I travel because then you don't have to push up the street. You can just blast up and smash down all the stairs you can ever find, which is going to be really cool. But what about the big question I want to know, Sam, is are we going to see you on this bike at this year's Rampage? 100% not, no. <laughs> no, you're not a big fan of that event? Well, yeah, I mean, I've been twice. I've actually been and competed twice in it, but I mean... You, well, you went and crashed twice, you mean, yeah? Uh, actually, I crashed once and the other time I just sort of sat down and rode down. But anyway, I was there and in it. But yeah, it's not uh, my thing. I yeah. like to watch it though, them guys are crazy. But I'm looking forward to seeing a load of free ride e-bike action and downhill stuff on this bike from you. Yeah, I'm well excited about um, just seeing the biggest drops I can find, jumps, everything. It's awesome. Sweet. Cheers for bringing it in. Cool. Whoa, super impressive stuff that, Steve. You like the backflips? You seen the stuff he does on his trike? How about that? Seen that. What seen I have done, I've seen the e trikes from mm -hmm. uh, Royal Mail yeah. and Co op this week. They seem to got on the e bike bandwagon. Mm -hmm. uh, what's interesting is the Co op now offer this service, delivery service, if you live within four kilometers of a Co op store. Right. Uh, as I said, zero emissions. And uh, obviously, the first pilot scheme started up in the King's Road in Chelsea. Of course. Of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's great to see more e bike technology getting out there Definitely. on the high street. It's time for Tech of the Week. I think you can stand alone on this one this week, Chris. Yeah, I've been checking out this manufacturer called Stand Up E-Bikes, and they do loads of different cool stands. You know, I think we struggle as e-bike owners to work on e-bikes. You've got to lift them up really high up into mm. the stands, and then the stand will tip over. Mm. But these are taking like inspiration from motorbikes. Did you see Kevin had a stand? Did he? Yeah. Oh, I'm not on about side stands. These okay, are maintenance right. work yeah, stands. Okay, right. But basically this slots straight through the bottom bracket, lifts yeah. the back wheel and the front wheel up. What if you've not got a hole in the bottom bracket? Well, I think they do uh, like e-bike brand specific yeah. ones. So right, okay, depends right. on what brand you've got, they do mm. a different stand for you. But yeah. this one's for like the Levo and the Kinevo. Just What's wrong with a good old stick? Hang a bike on yeah, the But these the look stick. a bit more pro than that. Okay. It's not about looks, fun. Chris, it's about practicality. But these do look really good. Right, there you go. 
Uh, moving on to some bike talk mm -hmm. this week. Now, uh, Chris, I hear you've seen the world's strongest man on an yeah. e-bike. No. Where on earth did you find this? Now, this is a scary <laughs> sight. If I saw this in my rear view mirror on the car, <laughs> I would be pressing the accelerator pedal down hard. <laughs> this is, guy looks like Bowser off Mario Kart. It's Pretty a scary. little bit like Die Hard 4, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, when he's in the truck following the, <laughs> yeah. the guys in the van. Definitely a scary guy, but he's uh, lost a load of weight. He's Britain's yeah. uh, world's strongest man. So, so he's, he's looking to lose, guy. looks like he's wanting to lose 20 kilos mm -hmm. since he's been back in the country. Yeah, yeah. but working hard on that e-bike, showing that it can be done. Chris, I see that our friend Hans Ray has been up mm -hmm. to his e-bike antics in yeah. Sedona recently. Now for me, that is a go-to location, is that, which is top of my list. Mm -hmm. and dry, really cool. grippy rocks, look amazing good. location. Mm -hmm. And did you know it's it's a, one of the energy centers of the world? Oh, loads of power stations and stuff, or? <laughs> no, it's spiritual energy, Chris. Oh, like a hippie hangout, I get it, I get it. Chris, uh, an interest in electrics last week, how to backflip an like e-bike. Do you know what, how I really you, liked it, how but did you, you know get what? On? I can't see many people wanting a backflip on uh, e-bike. Got a little... How about something a little bit more down to earth We've got week, a little eh? bit one easier this week. It's all about wheelie and the e-bike and the tips right, and okay, how to right. do that. Yeah. Let's check this one out. So today we're talking about the pedaling wheelie. This is all about using your cranks to keep the front wheel up in the air. It's not a manual and it's not a coaster wheelie. It's a totally different thing. Biggest mistake a lot of people do is by choosing too low a gear. So they spin out. The gears spin too easy and the front wheel drops. The vice versa, they choose too high a gear, they haven't got enough oomph to lift the front wheel up, it just grinds away. So biggest mistake a lot of people do is by turning the power up on the power mode. So a lot of people try and wheelie in turbo. That can lift the front wheel quite violently and make it quite hard to control. So I suggest just turning down the power to maybe even eco. So here's some tips for doing your wheelie. First up, you need to make sure your saddle's dropped nice and low out of the way. Select a gear that you're comfortable with, one that's gonna give you enough drive, but something that isn't too easy. Sort of third or fourth on the back should be quite fine for that. It's all about modulating your rear brake as well. Think about just scrubbing it to keep the bike from looping out, but pedaling to keep the front wheel up. It's a really, really fine balance. and something you need to work, work your way up with. And lastly, it's just to pick a marker on the ground is where you're gonna lift the front wheel, where you're gonna deliver that power. And work on your distance, crank by crank. Just try like six foot, 12 foot, and just build it up all the way across. I've selected the power mode, I've selected my gear, I've also selected a marker on the floor where I'm gonna be trying to lift the front wheel. So I'm coming into it with my bad foot forward, I'm pedaling, big weight shift backwards combined with squashing down on the crank, keeping my weight back, pedaling, modulating the back brake, and I'm away. Moving on to climb of the week. Yeah. Uh, Chris. Squirrel Squeezer, I mm. did not know what you were on about here, but it seems like it's from Moab. Yeah. Another iconic uh, e-mountain bike location. Yeah. Great place to go. So these are like an e-bike couple that always tour around. They're based in uh, Vancouver, I think, in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, but they're always sending loads of e-bike clips in. But this stuff out in Utah really impressed me. Slick Rock Trail, they've been out mm. on a bit of a mini road trip. Yeah. But this one is amazing. And do you know what? It actually, I can imagine how steep it is because mm -hmm. this is... Yeah, some big pieces of yeah. rock. I don't think this video actually does just at how actually steep it Super really was. Impressive. And we yeah. need to get out there for a trip coming soon. For sure. Yeah, nice and squirrel a squeeze out. So time for it in the comments. We had loads of good feedback from last week's show about the evolution of e-bike technology and what tech do you want to see on your e-bikes. Uh, lots of people got in touch. Daniel Fernandez, he says, internal gearing, GPS tracking device, camera and suspension manager. What do you think of those? Well, suspension manager, I guess mm -hmm. we've already got suspension management on e-bikes, mm -hmm. you know, there's lockouts, but do you actually use a lockout on an e-bike? No, Maybe if you're mm -hmm. riding down a tarmac road. Yeah, uh, GPS tracking device, I think high bike, uh, Specialized have always got that built in anyway, so you've yeah. got live track your bike if it gets stolen, so mm -hmm. that's already done. Yeah. Internal gearing is something we've said and we love. That, and I, as, as Daniel says, it's number one on his list, and I yeah. have to agree with you, Daniel, absolutely. Yeah. And the camera is something, obviously you can just strap a GoPro on, be away. But yeah. an internal one could be quite cool. Demon Dave's been in touch. He says battery tech is the main one. Then get rid of the uh, chain drive and replace it with belt with gears. Then someday Wi-Fi charging when you're on the road. Yep, with Wi-Fi power, charging. Yeah, power yeah. built into the road that you're riding. Can you imagine that? Like oh. wireless charging. Yeah, well, why not? I mean, happens it happens with phones. It happens at the moment anyway. Yeah, and uh, I think the uh, belt drive replacing with chain drive is something 
I don't think it's a good move on an e-bike at the minute. I think the traditional drive train, the chain, I'm saying, not the actual drive, but the, mm -hmm. the whole trailer system, the chain is the most efficient and the best way to transfer power. You start adding a belt drive, you can get belt stretch and you get debris and stuff build up. It's not as reliable to clear mud but, and stuff. For but you're, you're not changing your tune from earlier on, right? No. You, you are saying you still want an internal, yeah. hermetically sealed gear system. With a chain... Right. Connecting it, not, not about, a belt. Not about yeah. because they're really. There's a reason that motocross bikes and trials bikes, off-road trials bikes, don't use a belt drive. Right. Moving on to Zero Series MMX, uh, more integrated lights or integration for solar charging, maybe. Imagine that. That'd be more integrated cool. lights, yeah. Yeah. Solar charge, that'd be a good one. As I well. think a lot of the light manufacturers won't be very mm -hmm. happy, but then again, things have moved on, right? Right, it's time for Where in the World, and this time, Steve, we're going to jump straight in the plane. We're heading off to Queensland, Australia. Queensland, Australia. So we've got the world spinning on a different axis this week, and obviously, Queensland, Australia is uh, northeast Australia, mm -hmm. from coast to Gold Coast, right? Yeah, we've got Stephen. Stephen send his uh, picture in. He's on a Merida E160, uh, Sunshine Coast, Queensland. Yeah, looking like Chris Kavarik there, 40, uh, Stephen. 45-year-old 40, ex-MX uh, MX racer, second ever downhill race on his e-bikes. What, well, there's downhill racing? What race yeah. is this? Uh, does, does All right. actually say. I'd like to know more about these races. And what's this video here? Is this from yeah. uh, Stephen as well? No, this is from Andrew. So we well, we're in a different place. Yeah, North Vancouver. North Vancouver. We'll spin the world back. Okay, North yeah. Van. Commence on Meta Power. Yeah. Uh, me and my friends riding the trail called Boogie Nights. Mm -hmm. and this looks super cool. Look at this. Let's have a look at this then. Some big, big jumps here. Yeah. Whoa. Loads this of is North. This is North Shore, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. On the North Shore. Look at that. Wow. It's amazing to ride there. Nice one, Andrew. Last stop, Steve. Oh. The Avon Valley. Avon, you mean? Avon. Yeah, well, what have we got here? Um, this is from Danny on the Specialized Levo Comp FSR. Yeah. What's that um, over the moon stays? What was I saying? Yeah, so it's first ride out with her pregnant wife as well, out on right. the e-bikes. Yeah, oh, yeah, good work. Great. Nice from Danny. Yeah, and don't forget, we need more of your photographs and videos from wherever in the world you are. Uh, you know, uphill, downhill, along, across, uh, whatever. We want to see your videos on the channel. Yeah, use the upload service. Details of that are on screen now. So, coming out on the channel this week, we've got some really good in-depth features. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Friday, I'm really looking forward to seeing this feature, Steve. Power is nothing without control. And it's not, is it? No. It's not. No, if you've got the biggest powerful motor, if you can't deliver that, you know, grip and torque to the ground, you're going to go nowhere. Exactly. It's not just about the motor, it's mm -hmm. about the software that goes that mm -hmm. bike as well. Yeah. But uh, basically it comes down to techniques and how you use your e-bike out on the trail. What about Sunday? On Sunday. On Sunday is a huge, huge video. Mm -hmm. uh, myself and World Cup downhill racer Adam Brayton, uh, we tackle four passes in the Lake District, uh, tackling about 5,000 feet. It was a big, big, Big trip. Do you know what? I need to get one of those uh, red t-shirts. Really nice, aren't they? They are looking pretty cool. You can get hold of them, Steve, in the EMBN shop. Mm. Check out all the merch in there. Puffer jackets, t-shirts, hats, jackets. We've literally got everything That's, in there. Yeah, I think we're pretty past jackets now in the Northern Hemisphere. In However, Northern in the Southern Hemisphere. Hemisphere, as you're going into winter, yeah. check out those, yeah, those uh, warm coats that yeah, we've got. Great way of supporting the channel. Get in there, the details are on screen. Okay, it's bike vault time now. Actually, I had a bit of a red card last week for being a bit dismissive of people's bikes. Uh, I apologize for that. Uh, maybe I wasn't concentrated. And I can see, you know, you guys put, you know, put, put all your money into e-bikes and yeah, maybe a little bit flippant, but uh, yeah, I love, do you know, to be honest, Chris, I like every single exactly. e-bike. Yeah, I've never that. had a dull moment on an e-bike. No. So uh, I was just, I was just mucking about. So, but apologies if you got that the wrong way. Uh, what have we got first? So Paul's been in touch, he sent in his 2019 Giant Trance E plus two. Great Salt Lake. Yeah, Antelope Island out in Utah. Whoa, I didn't know that place existed. No, it looks amazing, doesn't it? That's, yeah, again, again, it comes down to classic location. Mm -hmm. I know where I'm going with this, Chris. Got to be straight in with a super nice, S right? Super nice, <laughs> fantastic. Oh, what? Alexander, oh. Scott Genius E-Ride 920. Zada, Croatia. Yeah, Ugly in Island. What? Uglian, Uglian. Where did you see that? Yeah. Oh, Uglian Island, near Zada. Do you know, I went to Zada once, there's too many cigarette butts on the beach, but what a fantastic location. Uh, as we saw, you know, great bikes had their launch in Croatia last week. Definitely. I mean, to me, that blue sky, look at those hills in the background. 
Straight in with another one, I reckon. A gunner. Oh, wow. Uh, out in uh, Iceland, high bike extra fat six. Crikey. Zero. Oh, we've been around Europe fat so far. Bike, yeah, flying around. Uh, yeah. Had some fresh snow and decided to go out for a play. I would love a e fat bike, and there is one on order. So keep an eye out for that. But going back to the subject in hand. Super nice. Three on the trot. Uh, yep. Crikey. Oh, and oh my God! I'm gonna to have to give another, maybe another four on the trial. Where is that? This is a name another for you. Croatia. It's a name for you to pronounce, Steve. Uh, this is location is Croatia. What's the problem no, with that? Uh, the author who's coming from? Uh, Foria. Who's Foria? H R V O J E. Yeah. yeah. Well, Foria, isn't it? I don't know. Foria. Let us know if we've done the pronunciation right. Most challenging terrain ever on my e-bike. Yeah, you can see that. Giant Trans E Plus as well. Again, comes back to you know, power is nothing without control. Yeah. Yeah, must classic. be like riding on marbles that place. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, totally. Uh, but again, I, I'm sorry, Chris. I'm very sorry, but that that to me is super nice. We're going to be running out of super nice, isn't it? <sighs> Whoa, <sighs> that's a beautiful photograph, Edu. It's nice, isn't it? Adam, uh, bike. He's got O2, O2 feel, Karma HD. And where is this, Chris? Looks like it's uh, Anster uh, Sordan, uh, Lac de la Garadan. Yeah, Garadan, Brittany Come in on. France. Guerladan, Guerladon, Guerladon, Brittany. Bit more French. Come on, Steve. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful, uh, oh, so tranquil. Really nice. uh, sorry. Out on a slow rehab ride with a dog in the rain after a new bike. See, the, the, there's a man. There's a man who knows how to take a photograph. She's coming back from a fractured pelvis. Chris, you, there's a man that knows how to take a photograph. It is, it is. Super nice. Super nice. Yeah. Oh my god, is this going to be a record? Uh, no, Fernando. it's not. Fernando, <laughs> <laughs> with his uh, Focus Jam Squared uh, X Checker Bike Park, Northern California. Great bike. Sorry about the background. A bit messy. Oh, just a nice one. Sorry, sorry. You broke it, Steve. We could have had 100% there. Ooh, moustache in yeah. England. Yeah, Anto, he's up in the lead mines. First yeah. ride, added chromag stem and bars and hope pedals to match the rim seat and stickers. Mm. It, I'm liking that. I am like, I'm liking that as well. It's I, I don't know whether the horizon is a little bit cutting through the frame, though. Just I, I, I tilted it, as well. I don't know. It's, it's just Ooh, right on the order. Borderline? Super nice. Come on. <laughs> oh, boy. Mike, uh, 2018 Commensal Power Essential 27.5. Where is this? National Mo Memorial. Kansas City, Kansas. Missouri. Yeah. Got the okay from a shoulder surgeon to start easing back into riding. Took a trip to KC with my e-bike. Able to see I didn't know Kansas cool City things. was in Missouri. I don't know. Looks like an amazing spot to ride though. It's Kansas City in Missouri. Apparently so. What are you thinking though, Steve? I'm don't see check too my, many on the uh, my geography. Don't out. see too many on the streets. I like it a lot. I like, I like, a, it, like, I like a, it. Like a lot, a lot. Super, 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 super nice. Super lot. Whoa. So wrapping it up, we've got Tom here as Canivo and Switzerland. Albus getting stuck in the snow sometimes, but mm -hmm. that looks super deep. Look at this front wheel just full up with snow. Not my cup of tea getting stuck in the cold snow. But it's not. It's not the end of the bike. Well, anyway, I think oh, that's a nice. One? I think we've got nice. one more. Nice. Yeah. I think we've got one more. Oh, we have. And this is a Cube Stereo Hybrid Race 160 mm -hmm. from Lisbon. Yeah, from Hugo. New build done. They swapped, <coughs> uh, got C33 carbon rims, DVO Topaz Shock, RockShox Reverb, mm -hmm. loads of SRAM bits on there. I'm not sure about the bars. I'm not sure about the bars. I don't know. I'm liking that. It kind of goes when I say in with bars, the... I mean there's the fence in the background. Yeah, I know, but look, it matches with the down tube and the seat stays, chain stays. Go on then, let's on you. This is a record. Another super nice. Oh, we're totally out of super nices this week. On the we're, show. Out the we're out of the vault. Yeah, but we love seeing all your bikes here on the channel. Don't forget to send your bike in for the bike vault or any other e-bike content you've got down to the upload service. We'll look at them all and hopefully it could be you in next week's bike vault. And that's it for this week's show. Uh, don't forget to leave us your thoughts on concept e-bikes and any photographs or any information you've got on that and we'll be sure to follow that up on next mm -hmm. week's show. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to EMBN. Yep, and if you're if gonna stay on the channel. Yeah, we've got loads of cool videos. You've got common e-bike problems, one I shot last week, really cool vid, check that one out. Yeah, and trail bike versus e-bike, which mm. I did with Georgia Leslie. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the show today. Drop some comments in the box below. See you next week's show.